Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. In the last tutorial, we looked at activation functions. So let's continue this learning about uh, the parameters of deep learning by talking about loss function. And uh, the loss function, where do you find it? Well, when you compile this model, one of the things that you actually uh, include is the loss function and the other two are optimizer and metrics. Okay, so what is a loss function? Now, let me use uh, uh, an example here, but first a loss function is also referred to as a cost function or error function, okay? And uh, it quantifies, as the name suggests, the error between the output, okay, uh, and a target value, okay? If you say that, okay, uh, uh, with the training data, for example, you know the answer is, uh, let's say, uh, 10 for whatever, this regression problem, and you get uh, a value of 9.7. When you do the training and then when you use uh, and when you compare these two then uh, that is what an error function uh, uh, basically is okay it quantifies the error between the output and the target value okay and the example i just gave you is the quantity right 9.7 versus 10. so what is this 9.7 and 10. well Let's actually use this as an example. Let's say uh, a linear reg uh, regression as an example. You have a whole bunch of data points and how do you fit this to a straight line? If I give this to, uh, I would say 100 of you, then you'll probably come up with slightly different variation, but what math is going on your, in your mind? What's going on is, hey, I wanna make this line as uh, uh, perfect as possible for each of these. So this is probably not what you're going to do. This is probably what you're going to do. Why? Because this line seems to go through, you know, all of these points and the compromise between the, you know, the, the error here is, uh, is okay with this blue line compared to the red. If it is the red line, then the distance between this point and the point on the line is very far away, even though it looks very good for these three data points. It's not looking good for this one. Yeah. In fact, even for this one, it looks good. The blue line actually is, uh, even though the blue line is not as good as red line for this data point or uh, for this data point, in fact, the blue line is a good average of all of this. So what math is going on in your mind when you're actually, uh, when you're actually doing this? Well, this is basically you're looking at the distance between the actual data points versus the data points that lie on this line. The line is again the, uh, the, the prediction that the machine learning model actually gave us, in this case, linear regression, yeah? And uh, the error in this case, if you just look at one data point and if you say this one is x1, y1 coordinate and the point on this line representing this, uh, uh, this data point or the closest is x2, y2, okay? Then what is the error? y2 minus y1, right? This is this is the error right there. So the error is y2 minus y1, and the line can be on the other side. If this, uh, uh, if the data point lies on the other side, then your y2 minus y1 can be a negative value, yeah? Or y1 minus y2 can be a negative value. So when you're looking at error, you typically square it. So you don't, it doesn't matter if it is on the positive side or on the negative side when you square it. Okay, so that's where the squared error is coming from. And now it's just for one data point. Now you need to do that for every data point, which means you have to take the mean or average of all of these data points. This is where the term mean squared error comes from. Okay, so when you do linear regression, all it's doing is uh, it's trying to minimize this distance between the point and the line for all of these data points, meaning you're looking at the mean squared error. So for linear regression, why am I talking about linear regression? Because for linear regression, mean squared error is a great loss function that we are trying to minimize. The goal is to find the position of this line where the mean squared error gives us a minimal value. So during the training process, it changes the line, okay? And what changes the line? That's where the optimizers come into picture and we'll talk about that in the next tutorial. But then the line is changed and then uh, the uh, mean square error is calculated and it finds the, uh, the position where the mean squared error is uh, the minimum. Now, when it comes to the common loss functions in machine learning, there are two types of problems, right, that we talk about. I should have animated this slide, but please focus on the left-hand side. Uh, there is a regression problem, which is 
what is the value? You're trying to predict a value. What is going to be the stock price uh, like five days from now based on the trend? This is a regression problem. Classification is, is this a cat or a dog or a tiger or is this a uh, cancer cell versus healthy cell and so on. So uh, regression uh, for regression problems, the most common, the most common loss function is mean squared error. And I just explained what that is, okay? And the other ones are mean absolute error and mean bias error, and there are a few others, but this is the primary one. For classification problems, again, you may have binary classification or multi-class uh, classification. Either way, cross entropy seems to be the most common one that people use. And, and again, if you want to know why, uh, this is out of the scope of this tutorial, okay? I'm focusing this tutorial for uh, uh, non-mathematical, non-you uh, know, uh, uh, people in general who want to use machine learning as a tool. But if you really want to do some research, find the right material on YouTube. Dig deep into these topics. Okay. So uh, for classification, binary and categorical uh, cross entropy, and uh, binary is just a special case of categorical cross entropy, and. Uh, Again, they are used for classification uh, problems in general. Now, there are others that are uh, support vector machine loss, like SVM loss, and a few others. I found a great uh, a blog that talks about a whole bunch of these, and here is the link, and I'll uh, try to provide this as part of the description, but uh, uh, please go ahead and have a look at it. So I found this, uh, I mean, I hope you found this tutorial to be useful, and in the next tutorial, let's actually talk about optimizers, which is again one of the three things that we define when we actually do model compile. So let's meet again in the next tutorial. Thank you very much.